Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Hello everyone. I hope all of you are doing well. I am your science teacher with the summary of Science Zoom online lecture number four. In the previous lectures, I have discussed about the cell, tissues, organs, and different organ systems found in the human body. In today's lecture, I am going to discuss about some organs and organ systems found in the plants. Plants are living things. They are also made up of cells, tissues, organs, and the organ systems. A typical plant has two systems. Number one, the shoot system. Number two, the root system. The shoot system is above the ground, and the shoot system is below the ground. See this part of the plant. This is the shoot system, and this part of the plant is the root system. The shoot system consists of the organs like the flower, buds, leaves, stem, and fruits. While the root system consists of the specifically the roots and some other parts also. Plant has four major organs. Number one is the flower. What is a flower? Flower is the most beautiful, attractive, and scented part of the plant. But its importance lies in the fact that it is the reproductive part of the plant. Why reproductive part? Because it consists of the male and the female cells. Where these male and female cells are present, they are present inside the flower. Dear students, as you know that a typical flower has four parts, namely the petals, the sepals. This part is called the stamen, and the inner part is called the pistil or the carpel. This stamen is the male reproductive part of the flower, and this pistil is the female reproductive part of the flower. The, the stamen consists of two parts: the filament and the and the anther. Anther contains the pollen grains, and pollen grains contain the male cells. The female part, which is called the pistil or carpel, it consists of three parts: stigma, style, and the ovary. Ovary contains ovules, which have the female cells now two processes takes place number 1 pollination in pollination what happens that these pollen grains containing the male cells they fall on the stigma of the pistil they go deep inside the style and they reach the ovary in the ovary we have the ovules the egg cells or the female cells they fuse with them now it so happens as this process is called fertilization so after fertilization it so happens that this ovary becomes the fruit and these ovules or the egg cells become the seed now the seed when it gets mature it has tiny embryo in it embryo is the tiny plant in it and when you sow these or you bury these seeds in the soil new plants arise from it so this proves that the life generation or the life cycle starts from the flower so that is why flower is considered to be the reproductive part of the plant now comes the second part and that is the leaf what is a leaf leaf is the broad flattened parts of the plant they are usually green in color why green in color because they have chlorophyll in it remember leaves have specialized cells that are called the palisade cells and in the palisade cells you have extra chloroplast which give not uh, only gives red, uh, green color to the leaves but they also help in the process of photosynthesis by trapping the sunlight so that is why leaf are the photosynthetic organ 
Why photosynthetic organ? Because leaves are the site where photosynthesis occurs in photosynthesis food is made by the leaves. Next you have that leaves also prevent the water loss. Why? Because it has small pores that are called the stomata. They are open in the daytime, but they close at night and when uh, it is very hot, what happens when it is summer or very hot, it so happens that it conserve the water, it prevents the water from water loss because they have a waxy cuticle on the surface of the epidermal cells present on the leaves. Another benefit of the leaves is that it has small pores that are called the stomata and due to uh, in these stomata what happens exchange of gases takes place. Exchange of gases means during the photosynthesis carbon dioxide gets inside the leaves and oxygen goes out of the leaf while in respiration it so happens that oxygen is taken in and carbon dioxide goes out. This all happens in the leaves. Now comes the stem. Stem is acting just like the skeletal system in the human body because it gives support to the plant body. If there is no stem, what will happen? Where will the leaves grow? Where will the flowers grow? So that is why stem is very much important because it supports the leaves and the branches and all other parts also like the fruits and the flowers also. Stem transport water and other sol solutes means solute the salts between the roots and the leaves. It so happens that the water is absorbed through the roots uh, along with the dissolved salts and they have to reach the leaves. So this stem is the passage, it is the pathway through which water and dissolved salts move from the roots to the leaves. They are also a store, um, storehouse, you can call them the stem or it is the place, it is the part of the plant where some food is also stored. You know, when a plant uh, makes food in the leaves, when there is excess of food, what happens? It stores that food in some part of the plant, like the stem also. For example, I am going to give you one example and that is of the sugar cane. You have seen the sugar cane. It is full of juicy, uh, sugary uh, liquid in it. And what is that? That is the food which is stored in the stem. Some of the stem are photosynthetic also because they are green and they have chlorophyll in it. And maybe over there some photosynthesis means making of food can occur over there. Right? Okay. Now comes the roots. Roots are the hidden half. Half means half of the plant and hidden means the thing that uh, cannot be seen. Why? Why they are considered to be the hidden half? Because they are inside the soil. You cannot see them. They help in the anchorage. Anchorage means they fix the plant inside the soil. Let's suppose if there are no roots, what will happen to the stem? It will not anchor uh, or fixed in the soil. It also helps in the absorption of water and dissolved mineral salt because you know that, uh, uh, that at the tip of the roots, we have the root hairs and root hairs absorb water and mineral salts. So roots are very much important for the absorption of water and dissolved mineral salts. They are also a storage house just like the stem. Stem can store food so as the roots also. How you have seen the, uh, the carrot. What is a carrot? Carrot is a root. The food is actually the food in the carrot plant is made in the leaves but the excess of it is stored in the carrot in the form of root. So it is also a site where some um, food is stored. This was all about the organs and the different uh, organ systems found in the plants. Now I am going to discuss a very important concept of the full chapter and that is level of organization of life. First in animals and then in plants. Dear students, uh, you may uh, play different games on computer and mobiles also and you have to pass through different stages and they are called the levels. 
Similar is the case with the living uh, organism also. First a living thing passes through the first stage and that is or the first level and that is the cell. Then similar cells combine together to make a tissue. Then different, see these tissues, these are one type of tissue, this one is another type and this is another type. Now what happens that different tissues combine together performing the same job, it makes an organ. Now different organs having the same function makes the organ system. Like the mouth helps in digestion, the esophagus helps in digestion, the stomach, the small, the large intestine, they all help in the process of digestion. Although these organs are different but they have the same job and that is digestion of food. So they all group together to perform a specific function and it is called the organ system. We have different organ systems found in, the, in our body and when all these organ systems they work in cooperation with each other in a specific body that will be called an organism. So first come the cells, then similar cells combine together to make a tissue and then comes the organ having different tissues but, uh, but the function is same and then different organs but the function is same it forms the organ system and then different systems combine together to make an organism. These are the different levels. This type of question uh, was there in the homework also that arrange these, um, these parts of the body in sequence. First you have to um, write cell, then tissue, then organ, then from the organ, organ system is made and different organs combine together to make the organism. Now the levels of organization will be discussed in the plants also. This is a typical um, cell, plant cell. Similar cells, similar in size, shape and structure, they make a tissue having the same job. They make a tissue, now, di uh, now different tissues combine together to make uh, an organ just like the leaf and now the different organs like the flower, the leaves, the buds, the fruits, etc. They all combine together to make an organism of the plant. So a group of similar cells doing the same job makes a tissue. And then what happens? An organ is made up of different types of tissues. Then a group of uh, organs working together having the same function makes an organ system. Then a group of organ system working together they make a whole organism. This was the end of the lecture as well as end of the chapter. See you next week. Until then, Allah Hafiz.